What's up, everybody? It's Friday. Me and you are working on my suntan, not doing very well in here, but it is the uh, Mark Jensen Show Live. And today we got Jim DeLuca on the show. That's how you say it, right, Jim? Absolutely. That's, what I, that's what I thought. I just want to make sure. I know we just did a podcast a while back, but um, I'm going to come right out the bat today. Today on the Mark Jensen Show, I want to talk before we jump in and let Jim share some more of his story and some great things that he's doing. Um, I want to talk. I just came out of, I still go to counseling and personal development, things that I do to work on myself, and I walk out. And uh, some dude was like tearing, I know you're big on video, right? So some dude was talking crap about me on video and I'm not a good speaker or whatever. I don't really care what he says, but um, I want to encourage people out there that are afraid to, to, to not do a video or afraid to not get their message out. Just fucking take action and put the message out there and just do it right over and over and over. And we're going to talk about video, but before we jump into that, Jim, after you and I did the previous podcast, I found out you were an avid bodybuilder, right? Yeah, I was a competitive bodybuilder for about 11 years, and um, yeah, very competitive, rose through the ranks in the Canadian scene, and uh, to this day, I'm celebrating almost 35 years of consistently working out. That's Much different objectives today than, you know, in my youth, but still go to the gym three times a week. Still go three times a week, huh? Absolutely. What, because um, I, obviously I love, I love working out, it's a huge part of my life, I, if I don't if I miss that, let's talk about the importance of it real quick. Maybe not bodybuilding, maybe just a little bit of exercise. How important has it been over the past 35 years to help you reach the success, to help you reach the things that you've done, to actually make you feel good about life? Well, I feel the same way. If I miss a workout, it's devastating and it um, and it's, it's as, important, as an important aspect of my life as virtually every other aspect. I believe in the old Greek philosophy of mensano um, sansano, which essentially means sound mind, sound body. And I don't believe you can have one without the other. So it is the cornerstone of my life and something that I've loved doing for many years now. Don't get me wrong, there's times when I have to drag my ass out of bed and into the gym. And the best part of the workout is when it's over. Um, but it's just, it's a cornerstone for me, Mark. Yeah, absolutely. I, I, and it's encouraging. I looked at your pictures and I'm like, man, dude, it was shredded. Like you literally, you were in great shape. So I just want to commend you. I mean, I know the... I know the hard work and what it takes and the dieting and the, the sacrifices that you had to do to get there. And that's just awesome that you had that type of dedication. No, I appreciate it. Let's um, tell the audience a little about yourself. I know you, you know me. Let's tell them a little bit about you, Jim. I know you're from Canada, like my boy, Alan Dickey, but yeah. where are you from? What do you, <laughs> tell me all about yourself. I'm not from a little town called Port Dover, Ontario, which is on Lake Erie. Uh, Port Dover is famous for a number of things. Every Friday the 13th, motorcyclists from all over the world converge here. And we go from a town of uh, 5,500 people to 250,000. So it's kind of a party town. I really like it. I, uh, for a living, I, I've been in the automotive space since uh, the early 90s. And about five or six years ago, that I, re I realized that the old tactics that we were using were getting long in the tooth. So um, I dove straight into visual, uh, video marketing and uh, digital marketing and social media, and I've been doing that ever since. But my primary focus is the automotive space. Absolutely, and that's, and that's what you love to do. So you, the, the name of the company, right, that you have is Digital Road to the Sale? Is that, is that the name of the company? Yeah, got okay. it. So tell us a little bit about that. Um, how did that come about? What, what exactly do you do? And elaborate for a little bit for me, would you? Well, I work with, um, with at the dealership level as opposed to the individuals, and we have what we call a brand advocacy program. And a brand advocate is some, simply somebody that represents their brand and creates a brand within that brand. So there's a lot of guys in the States in particular that are doing a very good job of this. So when a dealer hires us, we come on board and we work with their team and teach them about branding, teach them about marketing, teach them how to use social media, the right combination of social media, the right kind of post, uh, good content strategies. We also help the dealers with their own uh, merchandising and their own marketing and their own social media. So essentially we create brands within brands. So let's say the average dealer right now has his brick and mortar building, he has his website and probably four or five social media platforms. Okay. That means he's got six or seven different internet uh, entities that are pointing towards his dealership. If we take five salespeople, give each of them four platforms, we've just increased his online presence by 25 different entities, all of which points back to the dealer. And really, the days of sitting around staring out the window waiting for the up bus to arrive have gone. Floor traffic is at an all-time low, but those that are gracing your showroom floor are in fact prepared to buy. Um, matter of fact, Autotrader released a study in January of last year that said 72% of people in North America know what vehicle they're going to purchase before they enter a dealership. 
so our program allows them to start the report building process online with the decision to buy is being made okay let's talk about that i like what you said there about um giving you know four salesmen four to four or five different salesmen four different platforms which ones are working the best well right now um originally we had a lot of success with um with youtube but youtube it, it requires a lot of work and a lot of effort and um, the sales guys tend to stray away from that but right now my two favorite platforms are uh, instagram and uh, facebook um, instagram being owned by facebook right now is favoring posts that are native to instagram and then shared on facebook so you can use the same content the same format and get uh, three times the exposure if you have a, a, a instagram account business account that is a facebook business page and a facebook account so Right now, we're getting tons and tons of traction and tons of exposure from those two platforms. So Instagram seems to be pretty good. I mean, I know Instagram is, for me, is a place to go basically gain follow. Not so much do I gain leads there, but I gain, like, attention. Do you have a way right. to teach these guys? Because I'm didn't. i not doing it on the car level right now. You, you know, I'm not selling cars, obviously. But for your guys out right. there, the con is there a specific type of content for Instagram that's working well, or is it just like when you brand brand themselves or you're branding the dealership? What's working really well on Instagram without giving away too much of your secrets? Well, what we're having a really uh, a lot of success with are review videos, uh, because let's face it, I can buy virtually any car at any dealership all across North America. Correct. The days of saying it's a unique piece and they're going to have to come back and buy this one are virtually over, and the internet has eliminated that. So what people are looking for is good experiences. They want to know what the experience is going to be like. They're not particularly interested in best price, although some people are going to nickel and dime for the best price. They are, in fact, after the best experience. And that's illustrated by the fact that people are visiting fewer dealerships and driving more kilometers per vehicle purchase than ever before. So if we can do customer testimonial or peer review videos where we're sharing the type of experience that an individual can have by dealing with one of our clients, that gets them a lot of traction, that gets them a lot of floor traffic, and people are walking into our dealerships and saying, hey, I want to stop, talk to, I'll, I'll use the tattooed sales girl as an example. And they're asking for her or recognizing her in a way that was simply never before possible because Facebook and Instagram provide them with a marketing, publishing, and distribution network that's absolutely free. And this is without boosting the ads. Right. That's I do, and it's, it's cool that you use her as an example because I know right who it is when you said it. Right, and uh, she's somebody that I work with, and uh, she right away, she attached herself to guys like you and Alan Dickey and Jonathan yeah. Dawson. She got tons of exposure, and all over Southern Ontario, people are talking about her, and she's selling a ton of cars, and people are simply coming in and asking for her by her brand name. That's awesome. That's great. She's a little controversial, too. She's kind of putting it out there, you know, the images that she uses and uh, you know, the whole pinup thing. So God bless her. I love her. Yeah. I mean, she seems to be doing a great job. I, exactly. Like you brought that right to mind. That's a great point for those of you guys out there watching. Well, it's the, the tattooed. What's the name again? What's her brand? Awesome. What? There you are. You back? Yeah. Jim, can you hear me? Did I lose you or did you lose me? I I, th I don't know. I'm not sure. Um, but anyways, so we'll we'll skip into the next question here. So you're a columnist as well. You're you're a writer. Yeah, I write for, for magazines. Okay, so what type of mag? I didn't know that last time. What type of magazines do you write for? A Canadian Auto World is my primary one because again, I'm uh, I'm, I'm primarily in the Canadian market, but I write for um, Dealer Solutions. I write for uh, Digital Dealer. Um, number of different ones. Okay. You like doing that? Yeah, it's a, I haven't done it in a while. I got to get back on track. I've kind of lost my social media focus over the past month because I've been heavily weighted into a romance. So <laughs> one day I promise to get back writing and, uh, and back creating content. So I've got a lot of good ideas. We're going to be doing some really interesting stuff with, um, with cinemagraphs and with um, some new cool editing video uh, suites that we've got. So. Uh, be prepared for a whole lot more really cool, really engaging content. Awesome. We'll, 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 let, that, we'll let that slide then. All right, so. And that's how I found him. I found him through. His, his romance? Article. No. <laughs> no. Through his articles. Through his articles, which yeah. brings to the next question. So you wrote an article um, about SEO on Google. Tell me a little bit about that. And how can SEO actually help the sales? This is kind of the, the focus, I think, of what you wanted to talk about. And yeah. that's how John found you. So let's talk about that. Because I've done a show with you before. 
I know you, we have mutual friends. Uh, we are friends as I'd like to meet you sometime, but tell how, how can SEO help the sales guys right now? Well, you know, that article was facilitated by the fact that I hear so many dealers complaining about the lackluster service they get from AutoTrader and the exorbitant fees that they have to pay. And uh, we've been ranking uh, review videos on the first page of Google for the last five years, and we have a formula, and, and it's a really simple formula because Google and um, YouTube will tell you what you have to do to get those rankings. And once you get them, it's virtually impossible to lose them. But it requires some heavy lifting, requires some hard work and some discipline. And as a result of that, virtually none of these dealers will do it. But there's a real simple formula. Um, you do a video that's relevant. You, you uh, meta tag it with the uh, transcript of the video. You put certain links into it. Uh, there's a little technique called Facebook cards, which allows you to contain all of your information in a format that's both suitable for Google and for uh, YouTube. And next thing you know, anytime I search for any particular vehicle that you've ranked on that page, you're going to be first in the results. And the overwhelming majority of people are going to click on a video before they go to a dealer's website or a text-based um, web address. So that's the future. And if these guys will simply go out there, create review videos, and I'll share the formula with anyone for free. All they have to do is uh, message me on Messenger or send me an email, and I'll give them the formula. I got it all on one page. And then that's what the people are going to find. If I'm looking for a 2015 F-150 and Mark Jennison did a walk around video and that appears on the first page of the results, they're going to find me. And they're going to have links to all of my social media properties and my website if I have one. And that's how we start that report building process by going above and beyond what the average sales consultant is doing and providing them with an experience. They will know what your sales presentation is like, what your process is like, by watching you do a walk around review on a vehicle. They'll know what your knowledge level is like, they'll know what your level of enthusiasm is, and they'll get a good idea of what it is like to deal with you. Right. And as a result, we take the risk away from them. Right. It's really simple. So, my, which brings me to a minute, you kind of like encompassed all my questions and I have my next three right in one. Um, obviously, technology's completely changed the car world, but for these, for these guys that aren't so, I'm getting a rash of older car guys, right? I don't want to say older, but guys maybe in their 40s um, to 50s, and they're wanting to learn these new things. Where do they go to start learning this stuff? Like, like I can tell them how to do a video, how to brand yourself, how to tell a story, how to prospect all the things I do, but guys like yourself are really, I don't do Google SEO. I don't, I don't do SEO stuff like that. If somebody wanted to do that, where do they go to start learning this stuff? How, how does that, how did you come across learning to do that? Well, there's so many different resources out there. A lot of what we did was trial and error, but um, there's tons of resources like Think with Google, okay. which is um, you know a, a daily, weekly newsletter that comes from Google itself. There's one for the U.S. There's one for Canada. Uh, there's all sorts of different podcasts that you can watch that'll teach you how to do it. But really, the, the most effective way to find out how to rank a video on YouTube is to Google it. And YouTube and Google are going to tell you exactly how to do it. The, the two companies, you know, Google owns YouTube. Okay. And there's a very simple formula. And it involves shooting the video, making it relevant, writing the transcript, and a few links. And that's it. Your video will stay there for virtually ever. Really? It is impossible to displace that video once we rank it on the first page of the search results. So, uh, you know, I'm 53 years old, so I don't think of uh, age as an excuse. And I actually have an advantage being an old timer like I am because I can take that excuse off the table. If an old dinosaur like me can get into um, you know video and social media and become relevant in a very short period of time, then anyone can do it. Age is not an excuse. I like that, and that's kind of where I was going with that question. Not to call you, not to say you're older or anything like that, but I was I was wanting guys to hear it from you. Like it can be done. It it can happen. It's just a matter of doing it right. And not only can be done, has to be done. And um, you know what I, I always say to people. You have to tell me what you fear more, change or your relevance. Because if you're sitting around a dealership or any sales floor for that matter, waiting for floor traffic to come in and that's how you're going to make a living, you're destined to be between thirty and forty thousand dollars a year. You generate your own traffic, free platforms, you know, not only will you have fun, but you'll be relevant and you'll triple your income in the first year. Absolutely. Um I want to ask this question. It's not on my list. I just was thinking about it. If there's one thing you could fix overall as a whole about the car, about the automotive industry right now, what would it be? What would you like to see happen? I would like to eliminate the complacency that we see. 
if there's so many people that are complacent, there's so many dealers that are afraid to let the bad guys go because they're worried that they'll get somebody worse. I'd like to see more people that are driven, more people are focused. And you know, at the core of uh, my company's philosophy is that we want to make car sales a go-to position as opposed to a fallback position. So by creating brand advocates and empowering with these social media and video based tools, we're attracting a whole new type of individual to the automotive space. Somebody that social media and video comes naturally to, somebody that can earn $100,000 a year income in the first couple of years, and someone who wants to make a career out of this as opposed to you know the only job that they could get. I like that. That's a that's a fantastic point. I, didn't, I mean, because I often thought about it as myself. I'm like, hey man, if everything if everything went awry and everything went upside down, I couldn't do anymore. If I had another relapse or something happened, I could always go back to the car world. It's a fallback, right? But I like that. I like that mind shift you just had right there. That's cool. Yeah, and that's that's been the cornerstone of that's been one of my mantras, right? And I've been very bold about that goal. And um, you know, the type of ads that we're doing right now for our clients are yielding a whole new type of professional professionals that will do their job that will use the CRM, that will use video, that will create content, and they're driving traffic to the dealers in a way that was, quite frankly, unprecedented. One question I want to ask, so obviously I know video in Google and these SEO works. Is it different in Canada market than it is in the United States? Or like if, if these guys reach out to you, is there different rules or does it not? Uh, oh, media is social media. It transcends, uh, you know, national value. So anybody that reaches out to me, I have a lot of guys that I work with on a you know on a one-to-one -one basis, and uh, you know all I ask them for is endorsements because, like I said, I work on the corporate level. I don't have a as we speak, I don't have a training program or a, an online platform that the individual can use. Uh, one of the primary reason is that I can do a video today on how to get rankings on YouTube, and they change their algorithm, and my video becomes redundant. Right. The next. Now, some people may say that's an excuse, having some information is better than not, and one of the things on our agenda is a virtual program, but for anybody that wants to reach out to me, I'm, I'm uh, more than happy to give them advice. Okay. One of the questions I want to ask before we get up, we're going to go a couple more minutes here. What drives Jim DeLuca? This is about you real quick. A couple little rapid fire questions. What drives Jim DeLuca every day? Well, I got to tell you, that, and, I, and I said it earlier, is, is remaining relevant in an industry that I've been in. Uh, for over 25 years because there's so much irrelevancy, there's so many dinosaurs, there's so many people that are languishing on the things that we did in the 80s and 90s. I just want to remain relevant. I want to continue to contribute and by virtue of my contribution, I want to make some money and um, he'll help people to achieve their goals. It's really simple for me. Let's talk about one thing you mentioned. You've been entwined in a, uh, in a romance here. so. Things go, things going good at home for you. Life's good. I see a smile and finally. <laughs> yeah, she's yeah, yeah, she's awesome. It's actually, a, it's a, a, a woman that I dated uh, some twenty five years ago, and we reconnected on Facebook of all things, and uh, that's been a bit of a whirlwind. So I got to get back to work starting Monday. <laughs> I saw, I saw, I saw kind of you what you're up to. So, uh, Jim, I'm gonna, I'm gonna just gonna let you do the closing remarks here for my audience, for your audience, for these guys we're gaining here. I hope that you get that. Um, the, the digital course up and running for you pretty soon. I'd be interested in checking that out because I want to learn more. I know last time we did this, I wanted to, to learn some SEO from you. Um, I was I just got sidetracked or whatever, but I want you to handle the closing remarks. Any books you recommend, words of success, words of advice, words of encouragement, hit it. Absolutely. Well, I'll just uh, reiterate what you said when you opened. Um, you got to do video. Within the next five years, virtually 100% of Facebook stream are their feed and 100% of all search results are going to be video and if you're not doing video you're redundant and you're antiquated. I always tell people your number one goal with the first video that you do is to suck. <laughs> and if you don't suck I'll be disappointed because as we move forward and we do more and more videos you'll be able to look back and say boy did I suck. So don't put any pressure on yourself your goal is to suck and the only thing that's worse than a video that sucks is no video. So get out of your comfort zone, become relevant, go out there, shoot some videos, you're doing walk arounds every day, you're doing in motion driving videos, record them, do some behind the scenes videos, show people what it takes to prepare a vehicle for delivery, show someone when their vehicle is coming off the truck if it's a factory order or a dealer train, show them that it's pulling into your lot and watch your engagement go through the roof. Share the experience that people are gonna have using video, dealing with you, and people will be coming to your door, lining up to see you, and guess what? 
you're gonna get higher grosses and you're gonna make more money. So be relevant, start using video today. You heard it right here from Jim DeLuca. I'm gonna close it at that, that was strong. I was about to go make a video and sell a car. So uh, Jim, I wanna thank you, man. Good luck with the relationship. I hope that's awesome for you. It's nice to see you happy, man. I wanna connect. Someday we're gonna get a workout in. Sound good? Absolutely. All right, brother. Have a great day, man. Thank you for being on my show. Take care, brother. Take care.